Hello, my herbal essences. This is Carla, and I am here today with a truly life-changing and earth-shattering demo for you. Today I'm going to be teaching you master pesto ratio. Usually when people say pesto, we all think of the basil one that you toss with pasta. It's great, but pesto just means pounded. Think crushed, think pureed. And you can do that with anything, as long as you keep the four walls of the foundation intact. Greens or herbs, cheese, nuts, and oil. I want you to come away from this understanding that pesto is not a recipe. Pesto is a technique, and embedded in that technique is a really simple ratio. You're gonna be able to make a really delicious, amazing sauce that you can use for so much more than pasta. It's truly amazing, I'm a magician, and I can't wait to take you on this magic pesto ride. So what you're looking at here might look like a lot, but actually we're just scratching the surface with all of your spinets and all of your options. We're starting with nuts. Nuts and seeds, actually. So if you are nut free, you can use a pepita, you can use coconut flakes, you can use sunflower seeds. Following the nuts, we have cheeses. A dry, crumbly, or dry grating cheese is the best bet. Miso is an amazing substitute, and so is nutritional yeast, of course, we know. Then moving on to greens. Greens in this category is gonna include greens, like leafy greens, but also are beautiful herby greens. People end up with little bips and bobs of things in their crisper drawer, and you can marry these together to get to the right quantity. And then finally, oil. I am calling for olive oil in every application. It's a primary component. We've put together a really amazing chart that runs through all of the different categories, all of the options within those categories. So navigate yourself over to food processing. And included in that as well, we have another category called Zing. <laughs> and these are our little like flavor upgrades. So in an effort to show you my total confidence in the versatility and the multiple applications of the master pesto ratio, I let you guys choose what you wanted to see me demo and your choices, drum roll please. We're gonna have cashews. We're going to have cotilla, which actually I'm spinning with ricotta salada, so we've already spun the recipe. Cilantro, and along with the cilantro, I'm gonna add some Swiss chard, because I really want you to see how herbs and greens can play together. And then our zing is gonna be a serrano. There will also be garlic, using the olive oil. This is gonna be a beautiful combination. Let's make it. I've never made this before, and I've never eaten it either. Doing it live. <laughs> Let's do it live! Jumping into this cilantro cashew pesto, first step is to decide whether you are going to use one clove of garlic or two. I feel like using two. So I'm gonna roughly chop these and get them into the food processor. In goes the garlic. Now I've got my nuts, these are cashews, quarter cup of nuts. So you've got two cloves of garlic, quarter cup of knuts, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the zing ingredient, which is our serrano pepper. This is an optional add-on, but we're, we're adding on, we're spinning. The reason I like to start with the garlic and the nuts is to make sure that the garlic really gets uh, finely chopped. It's only 15 seconds. So you can tell when it gets kind of quiet, it means that the pieces of nuts like are broken down enough that they're not rattling and cracking all over the place. And so that's really what you want to see at the end of that 15 seconds. The place where things want to stick in the food processor is in that spot that I always say, it's where the floor meets the wall. So you really just wanna scrape the sides down. So next, the cheese. The measurement on the cheese is not gonna change for any of the pestos that you make. This is half a cup. So we've doubled the amount of nuts from quarter cup of nuts, half a cup of cheese. And I'm gonna process this until it looks also finely ground, but starts to look a little fluffy because ricotta salada, which is our spin for a cotilla, is a little bit wetter than something like parm. Um, it might be a little clumpier than a dry cheese is gonna look a little bit more sawdusty. But let's see, I've never made this before. Nice and floofy. As I suspected, a little bit more clumping. That's just moisture, it's nothing to worry about. And again, we have the fine particulate 
in the very edge. So the greens, the herbs, the combination of that, you want two cups. And it's a good idea to roughly chop your greens and your herbs so that they don't have a struggle in there. For this one, proportionally, I just want more of the bright cilantro flavor and a little bit less of our more earthy Swiss chard. I went ahead and removed <laughs> the stems from the Swiss chard. These are delicious, save them, saute them, put them in your next aglio olio, put them in your sofritos, Put them in the Swiss chard pesto video that I've already shot, which is cooked. I'm looking for two cups of chopped fresh herbs. And I do want you to pack lightly to get to two cups. Yes, I am measuring my herbs, which are a solid in a volume measurement for liquid, but like whatever. And then same thing with the chard. Obviously this is meant to be like flexible. If you go a tiny bit over, it's not going to ruin the sauce. For the herb stage, when I process, what I'm looking for is for everything to look really well combined and nice and green. And the herbs should start to ball up around the blade. Every variation that I tried during development, you get that balling up, which is a good indicator. Let's see if it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's universal. So this is a pretty fine textured puree, which is great. This is a good moment to give this cheesy, nutty, herby mixture a taste. Mmm. Oh my God, it's already so good. It's already tasting like pretty balanced, really bright. I'm getting the spice. It's cilantro forward, but it's not purely cilantro. It has some like nice, I'm tasting the chard. Actually, we didn't do this in the poll, but do you say Swiss? chard or swiss chard i say swiss chard but i think it's wrong we have several components a quarter cup of nuts half a cup of cheese two cups of greens i'm gonna use half a cup of oil there's another line to this song but we're not there yet i like to start adding the oil before i turn the motor on and we're gonna go until this is really creamy looking really emulsified but it's not greasy. Some of the pestos that I tried where the nut maybe had more fat than another nut, I didn't need all of the oil. So cashews are very fatty. I might not need this full half cup of oil. This might be about a tablespoon. I want to look at this. It sounds wet, which means that that coarse solid puree is becoming more of like a fluid. You can also kind of look in on the side and see it kind of rolling over into more of like a wave. Looks pretty good. This is delicious. The seasonings are fantastic. The saltiness is delish, chef's kiss. I think it can take a little bit more oil, which is great because guess what we have? A little bit more oil. while the food processor is going and your sauce is really coming together, you gotta put your nose above the column. Cause that is one of the most delicious smells that there is and it's so important to do that. All right, this looks glorious and amazing. Really green, really beautiful, really pesto-y, really tasty. It's a little shiny. So what I have taught myself in the development of the master pesto ratio is that every pesto benefits from just a little bit of cold water at the end. It's gonna help bind that last bit of oil and really make a nice emulsification. I also think it does something flavor-wise where it just opens up all of the flavors a little bit. That's it. Gorgeous. Oh my God, glorious. Fabulous. It's lighter, it's creamier, it's a little frothier. It doesn't have that like slick, oily look to it anymore. Pesto will start to turn brown or black because of the herbs being exposed to air. So what you wanna do is reduce the amount of air that is getting onto the pesto. So first thing, if you can find a jar with a narrow mouth, cause the smaller that is, the less air than like a wide mouth, imagine. Next thing you wanna do for storage is just float a little bit 
of olive oil on top. Olive oil is like a waterproof barrier. No air is gonna hit. And then the third thing that you can do if you have plastic wrap in the house is you wanna press the plastic wrap directly against the surface and then put another lid on. If you take these steps, it'll stay pretty green and still delicious and you can keep it in the fridge for a week. Now for my mnemonic device and song lovers, let's go back to the beginning. Double the nuts to get the cheese, quadruple the cheese to get the greens, divide by four and you've got the oil. What do you know you made pesto? <laughs> That's for my song, people. You're gonna remember that one forever. And then for all my STEM friends, my math heads, the people who just wanna remember this ratio, all you need to remember is 1282. One, two, eight, two. One part nuts, two parts cheese, eight parts greens and herbs, two parts oil. 1282. By now you have seen me make a wonderful pesto from the master pesto ratio. You have heard me sing about the master pesto ratio. You have a formula and not only that, you have a ratio. So you have no excuses to not make your own pesto with the master pesto ratio. Ironically, at the top of the video, I did say that pesto doesn't have to be the thing that you toss into pasta, but the cilantro charred cashew version that we made was just too delicious to not be tossed into some of the soba that I had in the freezer, so that is what I did. Mm. You could take your pesto and swirl it into Greek yogurt or labna to make it a gorgeous little dip. Make a compound butter for it and melt it over a steak or even chicken thighs or a pork chop. It's a great sandwich schmear for our little mozzarella bruschetta over here, but beyond that, you could thin it out with lemon juice and some water and some oil to make a pesto vinaigrette. If you're a focaccia person, when you get to the stage and you're doing the oil dimpling, you could use the pesto to dimple in and make pesto focaccia. So glad you guys voted on the choices that I gave you, but now I wanna know which pesto you create. I wanna know your individual personalized pesto journey. Let us know, hive mind, recommend to each others, come up with ideas. It's just summer of pesto, starts now.